April 9th, 2020. From El Cajon and San Diego, California, this is episode 206 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across the county from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. This is the first time yeah, that... I'm we, in a whole different city. I know. It's the first time we've not been in the same room, even, for a podcast, but that's the nature of the world right now. Yep, yep. How's everything? Are your family okay? Everything okay on your side? Oh, yeah. Everybody's good. The girls are a little bored, but they did start some online classes today. So they're um, they've got some stuff to do. Okay, and we've been watching a lot of you know old TV and shows that were aired like before they were even born, and so they're enjoying that. Now I understand you've been watching a lot of yourself. Monk, right? Yes, been watching a lot of Monk. So there's eight seasons, I believe, <laughs> and we are up to season five. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you, just as a side note here, there was an episode. Mister Monk goes to Vegas. Mm-hmm. And they're in Las Vegas, and they're solving a mystery at a hotel. And one of the characters says to another character, why don't you go next door to Mirage? They have $5 blackjack. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, turns to me and says, so they're either staying at Caesar's Palace or Treasure Island. And I'll tell you, Mark, it's the proudest moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> she, she knew the order of the casinos. Oh, my gosh. That's and, and later in the episode, they were in their room looking out the window, and you could see Caesar's Palace. Uh-huh. So she said, okay, they're not at Caesar's. They must be at Treasure Island. <laughs> And sure enough, that's where it was filmed. Oh, you could see the Mirage, and then you could see you could see Caesar's Palace in the background. Nice. So when Mister Monk goes to Vegas, the lieutenant loses a bunch of money, thirty five thousand dollars. And Monk says to him, "Where did you get thirty five thousand dollars?" And he said, "Oh, they just lend it to you here, <laughs> <laughs> and you pay them back later." And so he's so distraught because he doesn't know how he's going to pay it back. So Mr. Monk goes and plays some blackjack. And when he's playing blackjack, one of the people says to him, oh, you can't count cards, which isn't true. But Monk says, I'm not counting. I'm just remembering the cards. Mm -hmm. And so he's so good at it that, you know, he wins most of the money back. Not all of it, but he wins most of the money back before they bar him from the casino the guy who bars him is the owner of the casino, who happens to also be the murderer. Oh, okay. He his wife. Well, gosh, would Steve Wynn have been the owner of Treasure Island at that point? I guess not. <laughs> but that would have been nice if Steve Wynn had turned out to I be the murderer. I don't think so. <laughs> he catches him at the end, but they close the table down before he wins all the 35000 back. But he got most of it back. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> right. So anyway, yeah, we've been enjoying Monk, and uh, you know that was on when they were just little kids back <laughs> exactly. in the early two thousands. Yeah. So um, yeah, they really love it. <laughs> he, he's quite funny. Yeah, it reminds a... me a lot of myself, actually. Monk does. <laughs> yeah, fastidious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, uh, you know, casinos are shut down er- everywhere, including here in California. And Mike, on the last episode, we were talking about how San Manuel had said that they planned on reopening on April 12th, and now they've pushed that back to April 30th. And Mike, I was thinking, you know, here in California, we probably have not plateaued with COVID-19. You know, in New York, it's really bad, but they're, no. they're probably hitting that plateau, and we've probably got a ways to go. So I'm thinking it might be some time before these California casinos reopen again. Yeah, I'll be curious to um, see when they do open, if they they open ahead on their schedule or if they wait for the governor to say, OK, it's OK to mm-hmm. you know go back to your regular life. Yeah. But I'm hoping they do open on the 30th because I don't have to go back to work until the first. It would be great for me. We could go to the casino that day. And then uh, I wouldn't have to go back to work. Oh, yeah, if they opened on the 30th. Okay, if it was the 30th. I had the impression that they were going to be closed through the 30th, because that seemed like a good stopping point, right, the end of the month. Right, yeah. I mean, if it opens the 1st, I'll probably be back at work then, too. Yeah. 
I don't know, though, that work would really prevent you from going out to the casino, would it? Well, it would to, to going to San Manuel. Oh, that far, yeah. But uh, no, if Harris opens on the first, I think we'll be there that night. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some catching up to do, Mark. I know. We both do. Yeah. Hey, on the last episode, <laughs> we were talking about Caesar's rewards, and we stated that Caesar's reward credits expire after 60 days of non activity. And of course, it's not 60 days, it's six months. And Mike, you and I knew that it was six months. We just weren't thinking. We were probably, you know, we heard six and that's it. Yeah, I think we just heard the six. But it's six months. And thanks to listener Jerry, who was the first one to let us know we had made a mistake. Now, what the reason it came up is because Caesar's CEO, Tony Rodeo, came out and said that no reward credits would expire while their properties are closed. And so we were just assuming that however many days the properties were closed, they'd tack that on to the six months of non-activity. And again, there are so many ways that you can extend the six months. Activity obviously would be playing in a casino, but it would also be using their credit card or buying something through their Caesars Rewards. There are a lot of ways to do it, but we just want to make clear, make it clear, six months, not 60 days. Once again, another mistake on the You Can Bet on That podcast. Well, I, I would think that, say, if you hadn't been to the casino for, say, three months mm-hmm. or had any activity for three months, then when you reopens, you still have three months to go. Right. It's like they're time pausing time. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. And that's good. That's a fair thing. There's yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I'm hoping that they forgive people who owe debt. Yeah, that'll be interesting how, to see how that happens. <laughs> It gets lost in the shuffle somehow. The computer's reset. Yeah, they're not real big on money at the casino. So, you know, I think anybody who might have outstanding debt, no. whoever you may be, I think you might, you might get lucky. <laughs> yeah, it works in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember a while back, I was going on and on and on about, hey, what if you made a bet for the dealer on a table game on a side bet? And it paid so much that it actually qualified for a W2G. What does happen or what should happen? And Mike, you probably remember me going on about this quite a bit. Right, yeah. I I don't think this is ever going to (laughs) die. I think every couple of months we're going to bring it up. Yep. And it's just going to be a continuing nightmare. Yep, yep. Well, podcast superstar John B. actually wrote to Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin from the Gambling with an Edge podcast after he was listening to our show to ask him the question, that same question. And they didn't know. At first, Bob Dancer said, oh, well, you can't get a W2G at a table game. But then luckily, Richard Munchkin corrected him and said, well, no, it could be if, you know, on one of these side bets. But they both admitted that they have no idea what's supposed to happen or what does happen. So hopefully, you know, every once in a while, they'll have on this tax expert, Russell Fox. So maybe they'll ask him and he'll have an answer. But for now, nobody knows. Still, no more details, no more information. I'm hoping that they have him on. And he doesn't know either. I, I know, yeah. He's just like, well, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. That'd be great. That would be That'd great. That'd be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, you can bet on that.com, and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's move on to some voicemails. And hey, we want to thank everybody who has been calling in, because like a lot of podcasters right now, certainly within the gambling and Vegas community, we're kind of struggling for content, right? Nothing's happening. We certainly don't have any stories to tell about us going out into the casino. So we really appreciate people calling in. First up is Jason. Hello, gentlemen. It's Jason from Michigan. I uh, just wanted to reach out and share a story and uh, kind of give some props to the town of Las Vegas in these tough times. I have booked a trip for the family to the Outer Banks in North Carolina about a month before all this went down, and it has been nothing but a hassle trying to get this trip canceled. The company will not work with me, uh, even though I've lost uh, income, don't have a job, and they don't care, and they're holding me to it where I had a trip also booked to Las Vegas, and they couldn't have been any better when I called out there. Big props to the Bellagio. Uh, We had four tickets booked to O, 
and they reimbursed me with no questions asked and had the money back in my account in two days. And also big props to the Golden Nugget. That's where we stay every year for 20-plus years running, and they never questioned me. All they asked is, uh, would I like to rebook at this time? I said no. They said no problem. Well, we'll refund your money, and once again, I had that back in a couple days. So can't be more pleased with how that town is handling this tough situation and can't wait to support them and get back out there uh, when things do get back to normal. And they'll be getting my money from here on out in the future because of the way they've handled me through this tough time. So, gentlemen, hang in there. Everybody else out there that are gamblers, uh, we will get back at it here eventually and appreciate your time. Yeah, you know, in Vegas, it'll probably be a while before things, they really get back on their feet again. But one of the best things that they can do is during this shutdown is treat their customers well. You know, they're more likely to come back and say, hey, we really want to come back to Vegas. Right. Uh, I think Jason made two really good points. Number one is it's to their benefit to treat you well Mm -hmm. because that gets you back there. And number two, like he said, they're going to get his money for many years. Mm -hmm, Yeah. And if you turn them off, or you're rude to the customers, or you give them a hard time. Now, with all the Indian casinos in America, I mean, people wouldn't go back, right? right. They just go to their local casino and say, well, you know, they gave me a hard time, or I lost money there that I shouldn't have lost. So they're doing the right thing, and as they should. It's just good business. Yep, definitely. All right, next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Uh, This is William from Fort Worth calling in want to give you a, a trip report. My wife and I are headed to DFW Airport for our probably two to three thousand annual trip to uh, Vegas. We always stay at Nobu. Even though I don't really like gambling at Caesars, Nobu is a great hotel. We like we gamble at the Cromwell and everywhere around there. Cosmo for sure. But I want to thank you guys for the podcast and you've gotten me interested in crafts again. I used to play a long time ago but just kind of went away from it. But man, you guys have gotten me fired up. So we're headed to Vegas. Head to the airport in just a few minutes. Oh, wait. Coronavirus messed it up. We're not going anywhere. I had to cancel my flight two days ago. So uh, I feel like it's y'all's social responsibility to uh, put out a podcast every Friday night to help the gamblers get through this tough time. Since y'all can't be at Harris, Southern California, we'd appreciate it if each Friday night y'all put out a podcast. And uh, that's it. I put in a uh, karma donation to get rid of the coronavirus and... That's it. Take care, guys. See you. All right. Well, thanks again, William, for that <laughs> karma donation. Yeah, boy, every Friday. Like I said, it's hard to come up with content now for <laughs> every two weeks. Plus, I, I, yeah, I don't think we could do it. Every Friday night, yeah, once a week. I, sorry. I, well, I don't think it it's going to happen. Be- it just wouldn't be about gambling, Mark. We oh. could put out a podcast. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'd have plenty else to talk about. You're right, Mike. What am I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd just be me rambling on about things that bug me or, or <laughs> things that don't bug me. Yeah, the bitter life. Yeah, right, the bitter life. I can go episodes of Monk. I can explain each episode <laughs> to you. <laughs> how timely. This is how bored I've been, William. I've been giving my daughters through text messaging an hourly update on the weather looks like for the upcoming hour. Oh, God. <laughs> it's driving them crazy, and I love it. <laughs> they get a beep on their phone, and they think it's one of their friends. <laughs> and, <they're, laughs> and they open it, and it's just me telling them that looks like it's just going to be overcast for the next hour. <laughs> no chance of rain. <laughs> well, last week, I was sending you Deuce's Wild Hands. You know that game we talked about on the last episode? <laughs> I'd just send you three cards, and you'd say, oh, I'm in or I'm out or whatever. And that was so slow <laughs> and boring, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I didn't do too well either. Well, not like, initially, but like you, you had a nice comeback, though. You had a nice comeback. Yeah, I think you hit, got like four of a kind and had a nice comeback. Yeah, I did have a good comeback at the end. But yeah, it is amazing in that game how many hands you can go through where you really have nothing. Right. All right. Next up is Nick. Hi, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Nick in Kalamazoo. I just finished listening to your Deuces Wild podcast. Thanks a lot for talking about the game. I really appreciate it. Just give you a couple extra pieces. For your knowledge, as far as I'm aware, that game is only at the D. There are other variants of it, like the Jack, which operates casinos in Ohio, has a game called DJ Wild, which is very similar, except on top of Deuces being wild, there's also a Joker in the game, and there are some additional side bets. 
But as for Deuces Wild, there's one thing that you missed is that the dealer does get cards in this version of the game, and it's because there's an additional side bet that you can play. So you're not playing against them, but you can bet on their hand, so they get the same amount of cards that you do, a five-card hand, that you can bet on. I think you can place as little as a dollar on that dealer wager and up to five or 25, I don't remember exactly. And I don't remember the payouts and I can't find them anywhere online, but I believe that they had to have at least a straight or higher for that side bet to pay out. And I think that the payouts were pretty decent, but I'm sure there's quite the house edge on that as most side bets have them. We did fairly well on them. I normally bet a dollar when my wife bet $5 on it. And I feel like there were a few times where I got $25 on something or ten dollars on something and she got a hundred or you know however that scales exactly so it was a fun game i think what we really enjoyed about it is it was nice it was relaxing it was something we played before we went to bed or just to kind of get away from all the craziness that was going on as well we didn't quite listen to the wizard of odds and played the game more aggressively i'd put down the second bet more than a few times even on hands that i we're kind of close, so maybe I had like a gut shot or something. I'd put it now just to see what happens. And I definitely didn't make the final bet 97% of the time, mostly because I played that first bet a lot looser. So you can make it as much fun as you want to or not. Again, it was fun. It was a game we could sit and chat and have a good time talking with other people and didn't have to focus as much as we did with some other things. But I appreciate you giving it some exposure and talking about it. I know we're all going through some withdrawal, so it's nice to at least hear about other things we can do when we can get back out there. Stay safe, and thanks for everything you guys do. Have a great day. Yeah, so talking about that Deuces Wild game, and listener Kevin also wrote to tell us about this, I don't know of any other carnival game where the dealer gets a hand solely for a side bet. Because again, you're not playing against the dealer. The only reason the dealer gets a hand is for this side bet. Have you ever heard of this before, Mike? I've never heard of another game that has that. Yeah. Usually, if the dealer gets a hand, you're playing against them. Mm-hmm. So this is quite unusual. But anyway, yeah, thanks for letting us know about that. All right, next call. Hey, Dr. Mike and Mark, it's Jana from Houston. How are you guys doing? I hope this COVID-19 thing hasn't got y'all all up in arms. I've been meaning to call for a week now and haven't had the time, and I thought, well, I'm sitting here doing nothing, so I'll give you guys a holler. We had a quick little trip to Cushada Casino, which is in Kinder, Louisiana. It's about a a three-and-a-half-hour drive from where we are in Houston. We had a really good time. We had some time to kill because we couldn't get into our hotel just yet, which was, oh, my God, that was horrible. Anyway, (laughs) got on the craps table, had a monster roll, two monster rolls back-to-back. The lady in front of me rolled a good 30 minutes. When she finally sevened out, I got the dice, and I had a 45-minute roll. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I had a massive, massive, massive muscle spasm in my right shoulder going up into my neck, and I was having a horrible time trying to throw. I was right to the stick, but I had a 45-minute roll, made some great money on me and on the lady in front of me that rolled, And then on the guy that rolled after me had a great roll. It was just so much fun. But I was in so much pain when I left that table. It was all worth it, and I'd probably do it again, but, God, it was bad. But anyway, I wanted to call and just make sure you guys are doing good. And Not that I could do anything about it if you (laughs) you weren't, but I'll worry about y'all. But y'all have a great day, and try to stay well. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Jana. You too. Boy, those back-to-back monster rolls are they're fantastic not just because yeah you're getting lucky but because on that second roll you're probably going to be a little more aggressive because you've just had a big win so you're going to put more money out there and now it just explodes right as soon as you see that second roll is going well it's like okay there's nothing better really in yeah. craps than two back-to-back good rolls yep all right next call Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Uh, appreciate all the, the hard work you guys have been doing. And wanted to touch base. I was able to watch a gambling movie that you guys had recommended a while ago. And uh, in the downtime, I watched a uh, movie with Elliot Gould called California Split. And I liked it. It was good. It was uh, a little dated, but, you know, definitely one I'm glad I caught up on. So I uh, appreciate all the hard work. And um, if there's any other gambling recommendation for movies in this downtime, 
Uh, I'd appreciate it. Take it easy. Yeah, California Split, it is a good movie. It's directed by Robert Altman, and if you're familiar with his work, he used to like to mic all of the actors in a scene, not just the main actors, but everyone. So what you got was a lot of overlapping dialogue, but it also made it very realistic. So that, certainly this film, it takes place in the 70s. Well, it was made in the 70s. And, you know, it's got a re- kind of that 70s film realistic feel to it to begin with. In fact, the opening scene <laughs> takes place in a California card room. And it's probably the most genuine depiction of a card room you've ever seen on film. Very realistic. And on top of that, they're playing low ball. And it, they don't really bring attention to it. Only if you were a poker player and you kind of knew, you'd know that based on the things that are being said back and forth. But it's not really brought to the attention of the audience, like forced on you, like they're playing low ball. But that's what they ha- be happen to be playing. And uh, yeah, it's a good film. Robert Altman films, they're not for everybody, but if you're familiar with his work, I'm sure you'll like this one. It sounds good. I might have to get that and watch that uh, this week. Yeah, I don't think it's streaming on any of the services right now. Well, for free. I think you can rent it or buy it on iTunes, and you can also get it on you know, DVD. Yeah, I've noticed lately a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, we should watch this. I wanted to have the girls watch an episode of Columbo, because <laughs> I thought they it's kind of similar to Monk, and they might like it. Yeah, that. yeah. But you have to pay for them. Oh, yeah. Some you do, some you, you know, don't. You know, it wasn't yeah. on streaming free on any service. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. It was 20 bucks a season. Yeah. And even though I like Columbo, I'm like, uh, if they don't like it, we've wasted 20 <laughs> yeah, bucks. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So actually, yeah, he was saying, hey, what are some other good movies to recommend? And this seems like a pretty good time to recommend some movies because people have a lot of free time on their hand. So let's go through a list. This is by no means a comprehensive list. But a lot of the other podcasts, Las Vegas and Gambling Podcasts, have kind of been talking about movies that you can watch too that are good or at least uh, kill some time (laughs) during this pandemic. I think the the general consensus is the best movie, just quality-wise and really gambling-related, is Rounders. It's a poker movie with Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Came out kind of right before the big poker boom, and that's a really good movie. Have you seen that, Mike? No, I haven't seen that, but I've heard very good things about it from quite a few people. Yeah, during this break, so, you should yeah, probably watch it. Yeah, another one on my list. Of yeah. Things. And, of course, our favorite gambling movie, we've talked about it before, is Let It Ride, a horse betting movie with Richard Dreyfuss. You know, it's so funny because it didn't really get very good reviews, but we love it. And we've seen it many times, so we always recommend that one. Yeah, it's a great movie. (laughs) All right, so let's go over some kind of some Vegas-related movies. I'm going to kind of go in alphabetical order here, but, but mix it up as well. So Austin Powers, the original one, International Man of Mystery, a lot of that takes place in Vegas. Same with Con Air with Nicolas Cage. It's not so much a, a gambling movie, but they're in Vegas. Right. The end. Yeah. Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond movie. A lot of that takes place in Vegas. And in fact, James Bond even plays craps. Right. Dodgeball, the Dodgeball movie, actually Dodgeball, a true underdog story. The big finals take place in Vegas. Of course, The Hangover and The Hangover Part 3. Part 2 does not take place in Vegas, but the first one and Part 3, they take place in Vegas. Also, one of our favorites, Honeymoon in Vegas with Nicolas Cage and Sarah Jessica Parker. You remember when you and Paul and I went to see that? Yes. Yeah, we love that movie. I haven't seen it in a long time, but poor Nicolas Cage yeah, I, loses with a straight flush. I and... watch it every time. <laughs> he says, the unbeatable straight flush. <laughs> you don't understand. I had the unbeatable straight flush. <laughs> There's also Indecent Proposal, sort of an infamous movie with Robert Redford and Woody Harrelson and Demi Moore. There's an old movie called The Las Vegas Story with Jane Russells from 1952. Also, Lost in America, we played a scene from that movie on the show before, but one of the first places they stop on their trip around America is Las Vegas, and things do not go very well. Yeah. Also, there's Swingers with Vince Vaughn and John Favreau. In fact, if you listen to the opening to the 500 by Midnight podcast, when you hear them say, Vegas, baby, Vegas, that is from the movie Swingers when they're driving into town. That is playing right now on Showtime. Oh, really? Okay. Have you seen it before? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay. I've seen it on Showtime. It's It's been playing the last couple of months on Showtime. Oh, good, good, good. 
Also, if you can stop yourself from gouging your eyes out, Showgirls, the infamous movie, NC-17 version, of course, that takes place in Vegas. Yeah, you got to see that one, Mike. Yeah, I do. It sounds good. <laughs> of course, there's Vegas Vacation, Viva Las Vegas with Elvis. That's with my, one of my wife's favorites. Viva Las Vegas? Yeah, that's one of her favorite movies. Yeah, I love and it. And mine because of uh, Anne Margaret. Yeah, I love her in that. Yeah, so, she's good. She's beautiful. <laughs> And finally, What Happens in Vegas, starring Ashton Kutcher and Cameron Diaz. Kind of a silly movie. Going on to some more gambling-related movies. There's the movie 21, which is a fictionalized version of the MIT blackjack team. And I mean really fictionalized. So you know, a lot of it is not exactly what happened, but it kind of makes for an entertaining movie. There's The Big Town, starring Matt Dillon as a crapshooter who's hoping to become a professional gambler. There's The Cooler with W.H. Macy, who works as a cooler at a casino. They bring him in so that people will lose if, if they're winning too much from the casino. Have you seen that one, Mike? Yes, and he's the perfect person to cast as a cooler, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, he I really mean, is his good. his personality and his look and everything, he's the perfect person for that role. Yeah, yeah. There is Eight Men Out, a docudrama about the 1919 World Series where certain members of the Chicago White Sox were paid by gamblers to throw the games. I think I saw that movie with you. Didn't we go up to L.A. and see that, Mike? Uh, yep, I think we did. Yep. Yep. There are two movies called The Gambler. The original starred James Caan in 1974, and the remake starred Mark Wahlberg in 2014. It's about a literature professor with a gambling problem. The original is definitely the better movie, so I would recommend seeing that one before the newer one. It depends if you're a James Caan fan. Yeah, and Mark Wahlberg is fine. It's just, the I don't know, the remake, it's just not as good as the original. And, you know, is the original all that good? I, you know, it's kind of dated in some ways, so yeah. it depends. Right. There's also Hard Eight. We've talked about that before with Philip Baker Hall and John C. Riley. That's a good movie. I really, really enjoyed that movie. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm glad you finally were able to watch it. Yeah, oh, it's a very good movie. I'm, yeah. I was surprised how good it was. Yeah. Really. There's The House with Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler. They open a casino in their house to pay for their daughter's college tuition. Did you eventually see The House, Mike? You know, I never saw that, and I wanted to. So I'm going to have to watch that. Keep an eye out now. I think they show it on FX every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a good movie, but if you're a gambler, you're going to enjoy it. Right. There's Mississippi Grind, kind of a gambling road movie with Ryan Reynolds and Ben Mendelsohn. There's Molly's Game, which is the true story of Molly Bloom's celebrity poker game. I think that's a really good movie. You know, I've still got that on my queue. I recorded it a while back, and I just have not found time to watch it. I've got to take this time off stuff uh, more serious and watch some of these movies. (laughs) Yeah, definitely do, Mike. I'm sure you'll like this one, Molly's Game. Yeah. There is Owning Mahoney. Starring the late, great Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's the true story of a bank employee who embezzled money to feed a high-rolling gambling habit, like $10 million. It's, it's kind of a, it'll make you cringe. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty terrible situation this guy gets himself into. There is Two for the Money, starring Al Pacino and Matthew McConaughey. It's a, sort of a movie about sports betting touts. McConaughey is really good at picking winners, and he starts working for Al Pacino's company. There's Uncut Gems, which we talked about on the last episode. And then there's The Hustler and The Color of Money. The Hustler was the original movie, The Color of Money, the sequel, and it stars Paul Newman as a pool hustler. Both of those movies are very good. Excellent movies, yes. Yep. And then there's some kind of general casino fictionalized story. There's Bugsy, of course, a fictionalized version of Bugsy Siegel. Again, this is one where they really take some liberties, but it's a good movie. And, of course, there's Casino, which is a fictionalized version of the role of the mob in Las Vegas during the 1970s and 80s. Then there's Casino Royale, actually two James Bond movies. The original came out in the 60s and is just a farce. It's kind of silly and ridiculous. I mean, it's got... Peter Sellers. Yeah, right? Peter Sellers and David Niven and Woody Allen is in it. I mean, it's a comedy and it really Woody is Allen crazy. Thing. Yeah. And then, of course, the more recent version with Daniel Craig that takes it seriously. 
But movie. I think they're both very, very good movies. I enjoy <laughs> watching both of them, but, but you want to talk I, I, about two different kinds yeah, of films. Yeah, I get a kick out of both of them. <laughs> two very different kind of movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, there are all the Ocean movies, Ocean's 11, 12, and 13. The, the original Ocean's 11 with Frank Sinatra, it eh, doesn't really hold up. But the newer ones with George Clooney, all very good, or at least uh, 11 and 13 are very good. And finally, I wanted to include this one. There's a documentary called Holy Rollers, The True Story of Card Counting Christians. And the title says it all. It's this church group that learned how to count cards and went to the casino. And so it's kind of a fun story. <laughs> you know, um, another thing is there's a ton of sports movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. That aren't necessarily gambling, but, you know, since we're talking about movies, there's a ton of sports movies. And I don't know if you saw this recently, Mark, but a few days ago, the San Diego Union Tribune, the newspaper here in San Diego, had a tournament, like the NCAA tournament. They picked the 64 best what they considered best sports movies. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. And had them have a tournament. And it got down to the final two. Now, what do you think the final two sports movies or somewhat sports-related movies made it to the final? Okay, I think the final was Miracle, you know, about the USA right. hockey team, right? The hockey team. And Caddyshack. Okay, you're right on one of these. Caddyshack <laughs> was in the finals. Okay. Miracle went both ways. But Miracle didn't make it to the finals. It was Caddyshack versus Rocky. Oh, my gosh. I thought saying Caddyshack was the joke. I was sure Miracle was going to be in the finals. <laughs> no, Caddyshack versus Rocky. That's and fantastic. They haven't declared a winner yet. That's coming, I think, sometime this week. They're going to have the winner of the Caddyshack versus Rocky. It's one of these things where you call in. So they took oh okay they took the <laughs> okay and saw who got the most votes. So Caddyshack and Rocky, yeah, some of the movies that you know, The Natural, Miracle, uh, <laughs> Hoosiers, some of those real sports movies that are dramas as well as sports. They went a ways, but they didn't make it to the final. Caddyshack and Rocky made it to the final. All right. Well, we should probably add Caddyshack to this list, too, because even though there's no gambling at Bushwood, it is a big bet yes. at the end, you know, when they go, go golfing. So, <laughs> Right. Oh, Caddyshack has so much in it, it's hilarious. It really that, is. That whole scene with Bill Murray and the Baby Ruth bar floating in oh, the... Uh, yeah, in the pool. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. I mean, my girls laugh for days yeah. about that. Yep. And he just picks it up. No, no big deal. And takes a bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just one laugh after another. And, of course, the cast. Yes, yeah. The cast is phenomenal in that movie. I mean, it really is. All right. Well, those are some movies. Lay on your couch. Stream them if you can. Get them from Redbox if you can. Buy the DVD from Amazon if you can. And enjoy yourself. All right, let's go back to phone calls. Next up is Ray. Hello, Mark and Dr. Mike. My name is Ray. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is my first time calling, and I thought that amidst all the recent casino closures, I would try to keep the spirit alive with a trip report. But first, I want to give you a little background. I first heard about this podcast watching a YouTube video by Jeremy from Color Up. That was in October of 2019. Almost immediately, I started listening to you guys. But... I started from episode one, and I've been going in order since then. I'm only current as of August 2017. You've hit two fire bets so far and one royal flush by proxy, so I hope that nothing I say here is irrelevant or redundant. My wife and I recently went to Harris in Cherokee, North Carolina. This is our second time there. It's a nice place. We were there on Valentine's slash President's slash wife's birthday weekend. They've got eight traditional craps tables with one of them crapsless. They featured the all-tall small bonus. They also had a shoot-to-win setup and a digital table. We moseyed around and played some roulette, lost a little bit. My wife played some slots and won a $500 jackpot. I hit a $400 win on the Crazy Money Deluxe machine. Eventually, we got to a real craps table, and we played well into the night. She plays the ATS consistently and hit a couple of smalls and talls. No alls this time, but always one number away. Eventually, we colored up well north of a 1,000. But then the folks at the other end of the table saw this, and they started campaigning for us to stay. They wanted my wife to roll. They were yelling, no, you can't leave. We're all going to pass to you. You have to roll again. 
So she obliged. They all passed to her, and she played lightly on the pass line, just enough to qualify, and then possibly some place bets, but no ATS at this time. Then she started rolling. Not a lot of points, but a nice sampler. Then she hit the smalls, and she was kicking herself for not being on it. Then she got almost all the talls. She was one number away, just needed a 12. With every roll now, I was torn between hoping for and hoping against that 12. I wanted her to make them all, but I knew she wasn't on it, and she would never forgive herself. She finally sevened out without the 12. Everyone around the table was happy. She colored up again, but kept beating herself up for not playing the ATS. But we were up $2,000 for the whole day. The next morning, we got on the elevator, and some strangers actually recognized her. They were like, hey, that's the woman I was telling you about. She was rolling at the crafts table. They were thanking her up and down. As we got off the elevator, and we were making our way toward the casino floor again, I looked at her, and I casually mentioned, just be aware... Today is a different day. We only had the morning since we needed to drive back home, so we started playing. It didn't go well. We ended up losing around $700 for that day. But overall, we had a great time and left with a good sum of winnings. Since then, we've already gotten our invitation for Caesars to get even. All the rooms are now completely comped for us. We'll go back. I do have a question. I wonder if you've ever thought to put together a trip report form or maybe something that would guide us to gather all the important answers to the typical questions. Maybe things like what are the pay tables on blackjack or video poker? When is the VIG on the buy bet? What kind of table minimums, craps odds, how are the dealers, etc.? Just a thought. I do, however, want to thank you both for this extremely entertaining podcast. I just can't get enough. I'm starting to feel anxious about what I'm going to do when I finally get current and I'll have to wait two weeks between episodes. I can't wait to find out if you guys finally own your own casino or if you finally embrace the ATS and hopefully don't miss the fire bet too much. Anyway, I hope this is still your number. I'm sure I'll call back when I'm current, and I hope to hear myself in the future. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, Ray, for the good trip report. Now, he's in 2017, so is he going to just stay on order and wait to hear his phone call like, you know, five months from now? That's what it sounded like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly listen to see if his phone call made it. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. But as far as creating a trip report form, I wouldn't want to sort of steer people in certain directions. Yeah, everybody's got their own way of coming up with a trip report. And I wouldn't want to make it so that people are thinking, oh, I got, you know, I got to check this out so I can, you know, report it on the show. No, nah, we probably won't do that. I think that we get um, great trip reports from listeners as it is. And everybody, you know, brings their own flavor to it. So... Yeah, I think the most important thing on a trip report is the person who's on the trip, what's important to them. Exactly. You know, so if it's important to them to know the odds on something, you know, that's something they want to mention. But if it's more important for them to know, you know, how many uh, chuckalock tables there were in the casino, uh-huh, then uh-huh. that's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I agree. All right, next up is Julia. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Um Gosh, it's a bittersweet time, isn't it? I admit I haven't listened to the last couple of episodes because, A, usually I listen to them when I'm preparing for a trip to Vegas, and that's out. And, B, I usually listen to them in the car on the way to pick up my kids from school. And, again, that's out. But here I thought I would give you a call because I've been meaning to for a while with a little trip report on my trip to Vegas over Super Bowl weekend. And it's happy to think about because I had a great time. I stayed at the Nomad, which is the top four floors of the park MGM. It was lovely. The staff were wonderful. The rooms were just gorgeous. And I really enjoyed it. My first night there, I was playing $10 limit crafts for the first time. The Super Bowl was on all the screens. And there I was. A tiny bit tipsy, which I usually don't do for craps, but I'd had a drink with dinner and still feeling the effects. And gosh, didn't I have a great roll? This is why people love craps. Other players at the table were saying, yay, shooter, and coming over and giving me fist bumps. One of the other players came over and gave me a tip. I can't tell you how many times I rolled, but just that I ended up more than doubling my buy-in and having an amazing time. And it was just a treat. 
The next three mornings, I played craps at the Park MGM tables, which were just downstairs from the Nomad. And morning one, I left the table up six bucks. The next morning, I left down 20 bucks and the next down 175. My buy-in is usually $200. So it tells you how I was playing. I still had a good time. The dealers were great. The pit boss was very friendly and recognized me calling me by name after the first morning. So that was kind of nice to be recognized as that they knew who I was. It felt good. One night I played craps at the Tuscany, and that was sure strange. One of the dealers was pushing a C&E bet. Another dealer missed paying me, and I corrected him, and also missed picking up one of my losing bets. Did not correct him on that. I didn't color up there. I just took my chips over to the cashier when I was done because I didn't trust them to get the color up right. In any case, I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope to be able to go to Vegas again in the future. Anyway, take care. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the trip report, Julia. Oh, and thanks. Julia also sent us a deck of cards from Muckleshoot Casino. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have been having trouble catching up on podcasts, too, during this whole thing, because, yeah, I usually listen during my commute, and I haven't been commuting. I think a lot of people are are having the same problem. So, uh, you know, I have to kind of force myself in some situations to just go lie down and listen to a podcast for a while. I try to have them on when I'm doing other things around the house, just chores or yard work, but sometimes that's hard because, you know, somebody will start talking to me, or I'll be using an appliance that's too loud, or, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's funny, this whole, you know, staying at home thing has really made me aware of how much we're in our routine. <laughs> yeah. And we like our routine, you know, like we listen to podcasts when we're, you know, on the road or or like Friday night comes and you and I head to the casino. Mm-hmm. Our lives get into such a routine and when it's broken and it's like, well, what do I do? You know, you're <laughs> almost like lost. Yeah. Like sitting there. Should I go out to the yard? Or <laughs> it's weird. I know. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully this won't last too much longer. All right, next call. Hi, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Suzanne, a longtime listener calling from the East Coast. I usually take a solo trip to Las Vegas every April, and like many, I had to cancel my trip this year. Since I'm missing it badly and I've been reminiscing about prior visits to Vegas, I thought I'd send a very belated trip report from April 2019. On one afternoon, I was playing craps at the Cromwell, a pretty full table. A young couple about half my age was standing next to me. The guy was playing, and the woman he was with was watching. When the shooter rolled the dice off the table, the guy next to me called out, All bets off. When I heard that, I immediately thought of Mark. So I turned to the guy and said, There's this podcaster who has the exact same superstition. And he says, Who's that? I said, It's a podcast called You Can Bet on That. And the guy said, you mean Mark and Dr. Mike? So it turns out he's a fan of the podcast and lives in the San Diego area. So we chatted about your show while playing at a reasonably hot table. So to Ariel and Victoria, I hope you had good luck during the rest of your trip last year and are staying safe in these difficult times. And to Mark and Dr. Mike, many thanks to you and your podcast for bringing together folks from across generations and across the country. Take care. Wow. <laughs> That's something. Well, you know, it's true. And it's not us. It's crap. You nah. can, and I, I've said this before on other podcasts. You can be on a uh, crafts table. doesn't matter what age you are, what generation, you know, what ethnicity, nothing. It's just everyone is friendly. Everyone yeah. <laughs> is together. I hope so. Yeah. Well, except for those don't players. <laughs> But wow, thanks, uh, Susanna. Yeah, that's kind of a fun uh, story for us to hear. And just to make it clear, you know, I call my bets off when the dice go off the table. Not because I'm superstitious, but because it limits my exposure (laughs) to a negative EV game. Right, Dr. Mike? I knew this was coming. I knew you were going to say that. I'm thinking, he's going to have to make this clear that he's not superstitious. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey, I'll tell you, when I do do it, I can't tell you how many times I do do it, a seven comes up, and then you, under your breath, go, oh, every time. I'm fuming. 
<laughs> I'm fuming. And, you know, honestly, I don't know if it's because the seven came up or because I just hate the fact that you called your bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's your superstition <laughs> is I brought out the seven by calling my bets off. Right. <laughs> Right, that is my superstition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last call. Hey, this is John from Nashville. Uh, I called a few weeks ago and was talking about varying different strategies when you're at the table, and you all had some great advice, and I tried to take it, and I tried to do multiple sessions on my last trip. It would play one way, and then if I got up or down a little bit, go take a break. Uh, my break consisted of just going to blackjack table for about an hour, uh, and then we return and, and try to just stick with one strategy. However, later in the evening, as I continued to have a couple of adult beverages, I did find myself starting to vary into different strategies, but it was all fun. Um, had somebody hit the all tall, all small, and uh, played on those winnings for a while. Yeah, it was a great trip. Hope everyone's doing well surviving COVID-19. I have actually made a little three-foot by 18-inch uh, board that I will email a picture and I've just been trying out some different strategies, and uh, it's nice to kind of go at my own pace and pay myself how the dealers would pay me and to have real roles and not try to do it online. So thank you for taking my call, and I uh, really enjoy the podcast. Thanks. Good. Yeah, it's always a good idea to break, you know, just to break things up. If things are going bad, take a break, even if that means playing some other game, and then go back to craps or whatever you were playing just taking a break so that you don't go on tilt and throw all your money out there now i don't know that drinking adult beverages is going to help you in that respect but uh (laughs) the former definitely will well uh, there's no doubt about it that drinking adult beverages does help you mark in certain situations Uh like you know if you're watching a charger game something (laughs) like that you need an adult beverage to get through that right to to numb it to numb you yeah i agree yeah, so see, adult beverages can't help in certain situations. Okay. Well, I guess I, gr- I agree with that. Just not not usually gambling. Not usually gambling. Not usually gambling. <laughs> but remember our good friend Paul, the most money he ever won. He was drunk as a Stinking drunk. drunk. Stinking drunk. <laughs> yep. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some recurring PayPal donations. Robin from Anytime Gambling. James and Kurt. Thanks very much. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program that searches through all the raw American TV data. Just go to youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at You Can Bet On That and on Facebook at facebook.com slash You Can Bet On That. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. All right, Dr. Mike. Oh, just as a side note... James, who has the reoccurring uh, donation, yeah. he lives in Long Island, I believe, and works in New York City. And I text messaged him just to find out how he was. And he said him and his family were all doing well. Oh, good. So I was really glad to hear that because I was thinking of some people that, that we know around the country who we've met through our gambling that you know live in areas that are being pretty hard hit. Yeah. And I was a little worried about him. And also uh, text message several of the people that we know out at Harrah's Southern California Rencon. Yeah. And they're all fine and everyone's healthy and happy, but uh, they're all a little antsy to get back yep. to the casino. Yep. And some of them who are there daily, and Mark, you know who people had talked <laughs> yep, about. Yep. <laughs> they are really antsy to get back in the casino. <laughs> I think this has really disrupted their life. <laughs> But you got to take this time to enjoy movies and get caught up on things. You've been spending more time at home, so you've probably spent more time with your boys than you have yep. in the mm-hmm. last year or so. Yep, for sure. I know I have with my dogs. And and that's good. You know, it's a, it's a good... We've been getting a lot of stuff done. Know. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of things. Yeah. And all this. Yep. yep, same with us. We've been getting a lot of housework done. <laughs> I want to say, and uh, my wife will laugh when she hears this, but... My side of the bedroom has never been cleaner. Nice. <laughs> it's the cleanest it's ever been. And I'm going to keep it that way, at least for me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, stay safe, everybody. And on our next episode in a couple of weeks, hopefully we'll have some good news 
not just for the gambling world, but for the whole world. That'd be nice if we can get through one more podcast and then get back to the casinos, and then we'll have tons, tons to talk about, because I'm sure it's going to be quite lively when we get back. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for listening. Good night. Dr. Mike.